Hi everyone, Sail from QuickNote here, back again with another video. And in this video, we will be talking about the debug and trace API of Ethereum. So without any ado, let's jump into it. For any EVM based chains, in general, there are two main types of transactions. The first one being the native token transfer transaction. In that, the native token is transferred from one person to another or one party to another. For Ethereum, it will be a Ethers transfer transaction. For Polygon POS or Polygon proof of stake network, it will be Matic transfer transaction. The second type is a transaction type in which a transaction needs to interact with a smart contract or multiple smart contracts to get executed. A lot of the times, a transaction might interact with one smart contract and that smart contract has some functions which are dependent on other smart contracts. So to execute those functions, there can be multiple interactions between smart contracts within the course of that transaction. In transaction receipts, we do get the data about the function which has been executed and the event which has been emitted. But to get the low level data, like what were the internal transactions or what were the different smart contracts this transaction interacted with, we need to have special APIs like debug and trace APIs. Using the debug and trace API, we can simulate a transaction at a particular block and thus at a particular state of the blockchain so that we can get an output which lets us know that what will be the output of that transaction and what will be the interactions that transaction will go through. These interactions are called traces and which helps us trace different different information about that transaction. So basically using debug and trace API, one can get the state changes that transaction can make and the traces of that transaction, which is very helpful to decode the underlying information about the transaction and debug the smart contracts. Whenever making a smart contract, this kind of information is very helpful to debug any potential failures of the smart contract or smart contract transaction, and also to better understand the transaction journey. So debug and trace API both does the same thing, but has some minor differences. Debug API is native to get implementation of Ethereum, which is a Ethereum client. And trace was native to open Ethereum, which was a Ethereum client. But now trace is supported by Aragon client of Ethereum. So some differences between the debug and trace APIs are that the debug API has more methods compared to the trace API. The trace API also includes the rewards for miners in the trace, whereas the debug API does not. For the call trace, the trace API has a field called trace addresses, which gives the exact location of the call trace, whereas the call stack is in nested form in the response of a debug API. For error handling, the debug API uses the predefined constants to represent the errors which might occur during a EVM execution, whereas constant error handling is used by the trace API. The trace API does not include the calls to the nine pre-compiled contracts of the Ethereum chain, whereas the debug API does, because these contracts does not have a EVM bytecode, but they are source code is already inbuilt into the Ethereum client, which is the Keth client, which is the official Ethereum client. These nine pre-compiled contracts are nothing but some contracts which are already there in EVM, which can be called in any other smart contracts. They handle some complex execution which if implemented in solidity will cost a lot of gas. Since they are a protocol level implementation, more information on these pre-compiled smart contracts can be found in the appendix E of the Ethereum yellow paper. So now that we know quite a bit about the debug and trace API, let's see how these APIs work. We will use 
quick note because quick note supports both trace and debug api now to use the trace and debug api with quick note you would have to be on a build plan or any paid plan because these calls are very resource intensive and heavy that's why they are not included in the free plan so once you have a paid plan you can simply grab a quick note https endpoint so over here we have two different javascript files both in ethers js this file debug.js will be used to run debug trace call this file trace.js will be used to run trace call and both of them will essentially do same thing which is to simulate this eth call for the latest block number so over here we are importing ethers then integrating our quick node url over here then sending a debug trace call call to our quick node endpoint and then passing on the parameters for the eth call which is the two address the data field and then specifying the block number which is to be the latest block number then we are just printing the output by stringifying the output and printing it because the json output needs to be stringified for javascript to be able to print it and then we are doing the same thing over here in trace.js as well but in trace call we have to also specify the type of trace which is uh, vm trace trace and state diff so in vm trace it gives us the virtual machines trace at the time of the execution of that transaction in trace it gives us the basic trace of the given transaction in state div it gives us the altered ethereum straight by this transaction now let's try to run each of these files and see what are the differences in output so this is the output we get from the debug api which is uh, the value it also has the opcodes as you can see over here jumpy is zero then dupe one push two etc etc and now let's try to run the trace api call or the trace file so you can see we have got this as the result so now let's try to change the type of trace we want to receive let's say we want to receive the vm trace or virtual machine trace in this we get the state of the virtual machine during the execution of the transaction and now let's try to get the third type which is state diff All right, so in this, we get the state difference made by the transaction execution. So this is how the trace and debug calls work. And this is how you can get information about transactions or simulate a transaction. So if you learned anything from this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comment section what more topics would you like us to cover. Thank you, everyone.